fixing the money thing. As pastors, we we you know we we hear this a lot. God said to do this. Right. Okay. God gave me an idea. I'm to start a business. Or God said this. I remember uh, you know we our company. I had a lady once that she came to me all excited. Man, Gary, God said I'm to be involved with your company. I, you know it's so good to hear God and. And so, uh, you know, we were involved with uh, the insurance markets and securities markets and you know, helping people invest in retirement. And so I said, well, ride along with me and let's, let's start training, right? The first night that I took her on training, at the end of that night, she goes, I, I'm not doing this. Mm-hmm. She spent two weeks telling me, God said, God said. Now, mm-hmm. she was unemployed. She needed money. And God knew that behind that time period of learning, was an opportunity of destiny for her, right, but right. she was overwhelmed and saw that she felt she could not tackle that mm. on day one. But how many people never finish? You see, the walls can be intimidating, mm. right? The right. walls can be intimidating. Right. And God always calls us to do something that's bigger than that's exactly us right. because he's stretching us, he's growing us. And the things we're believing him for, the destiny he has mm-hmm. for you, It'll take change, but he's so wonderful to lead us through that change. And that's what I love about the series because you help us see it and you help us lead, you know, you lead us through it so we can get to where God intended us to be. So the walls are down. The walls are down. We gotta obey God. We we do have to offensively take those things out of the way. Offensively. Yes. Offense. Move out. He has no authority. Now this is now the wall. Remember the first spies that went into the land. Remember what they said? Hmm. In that land, we saw giants and walled cities. They backed out. Right. They, they stepped into unbelief. And the Bible says they wept because they had this promise. They were all going across this desert to get to and came out of slavery. And they were so excited till they saw what they thought was impossible. Mm. But what they need to understand is right past that is the promise. Yes. And so many people, Drenda, I, let's talk about that. You know, the walls are real. If you're sick, you need healing. Sickness is real, mm-hmm. all right? If you're addicted, that's real. Uh, people, if you're in debt, that's real. And so it's hard to dream dreams when you're bound in slavery to something, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. You, you don't have dreams as a slave. But the promise is there, and what we have to understand is that the walls are down. They're already down. Mm-hmm. Anything holding you hostage is illegal. But you have to enforce the will of God. You have to take up your authority and you have to deal with it by the authority of the kingdom of God. But yes. it has it is an intimidating place, but it is not reality in the sense that it has no legal jurisdiction to hold you there. Yes. I like what I like what it says about charging and yeah. taking the city because that shows you right there. It's military. It's it's in charge. You have to actually move in there. Well, that's after the walls you, are down. Yeah, like you said, you have to take that place. Yes, okay, I like that word take it. The walls are down. Mm-hmm. And so they had to get up. Notice the armed men. Remember they circled the city? Mm-hmm. The armed men did not need to fight the battle for the walls to come down, right? That battle is already won. God did it. And that's the same with Jesus. Jesus already paid the price. Satan has been defeated. But we still have to charge in. Mm-hmm. We have to take territory. We have to learn how to administrate it and bring it under the jurisdiction of the kingdom of God. That's good. Now, here's an interesting thing that I think... We can talk about for a long time, but we won't have time for it. But you need to look at this. Mark 16, a great scripture. Jesus tells us these signs will accompany those who believe. That's the 17th and 18th verse. In my name, in my authority, uh, they will drive out demons. Hmm. The walls are down. Get out of here. (laughs) Out of the way, dude. Out. (laughs) All right. They'll speak in new tongues. Now we'll come back to that one. Pick up snakes with their hands. We're going to go into enemy-held territory. We're going to pick those things up and throw them aside. Uh, yes. We're not going to worry about it yes, hurting us because it can't. Yes, it, yes. It, we have dominion over that. Then if they drink any deadly poison, it shall not harm them. Mm-hmm. Satan's, Satan has been defeated. We are not to be afraid to charge in, as you said. Mm-hmm. We're going to charge in, right? And we're going to lay hands on, on people, sick people, and they shall recover. So think of an occupying army. Think of World War II, all right? So Japan is defeated. Now an occupying force comes in and now begins to administrate that country. Hmm. An occupying army defeats the enemy. 
they then begin to occupy that territory, correct? Right. So God's kingdom is advancing and occup occupation is God's desire. Hmm. The, but the battle has been won. And let me go back to these things. Um, it's interesting that speaking in tongues is listed in Mark 16. Because there's nine spiritual gifts, right? Right. Why is it the only one Why? listed? <laughs> because these are marching orders. These are go in my name, get it done, you know, preach the gospel, and these signs will accompany those that go. Speaking in tongues, what does that do? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, we download mysteries. Right. Speaking in tongues is how our commanding officer directs us. It's like our walkie-talkie. That's so if good. If you're in military, you got radio, right? right? The enemy doesn't know what you're doing, but your commanding officer does. Yes. And he radios you. He can see the high picture. Go climb hill one. Go over that, you know, take that. So speaking in tongues brings us the mysteries or our game plan from the commanding officer in battle. We have the authority, right? We right. pick up snakes, can't hurt us. Right. We drink deadly poison. Sickness can't hurt us, but we still need direction. Good. We're, we're, on, we're on, a, on a mission, right? Yes. We, we need to pray in the spirit to get the marching orders of the day. That's good. So that's why that one's listed there, and none other the, of the spiritual gifts are listed there. This is a commandment. Jesus is leaving the earth. He is giving his disciples direction to take territory and occupy it. But it's sad because you and I, we've pastored for years. We see people that are in debt that just simply stay in debt for decades. We see people that are sick, they stay sick. We see people that have problems with addiction, they stay in addiction. And yet we also see people that get healed, we see get out that, of debt, build multi-million dollar businesses exactly. that used to live in HUD housing. Right, so we see what all is kinds that of stories. What is the difference in that? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I think part of the difference is they have been taught to put their walls up. Mm. I think they have been taught the enemy's bad, Satan, and Satan's scary. Uh, disease is bad. Uh, you know, I'm going to build my walls up, you know, and I'm not, you know, I'm going to be, a, I'm afraid of the devil. They have not been taught properly that he has zero authority, okay. nor have they been taught the promise of where they're going and how great it is and why they want to get there mm -hmm. and how they've been designed by God to actually act out and take territory that God shows them. Yes. The Bible says the kingdom of God suffers violence but the violent take it by force. So this is an act, as you said, of moving out. It's an act it's of charging and taking marching orders from heaven and going exactly out in right. His authority. And it's not a matter of our authority. It's a matter that we've got the government of God backing yes. you. You've got God. When you hear His word, you pray in the spirit, you get direction, you step out in that word. You've got the government of God backing you as you go into battle, exactly. as you take the territory. And that's the difference in winning. Every time you look at the Bible, people of God were facing some situation that looked impossible That's right. always. And it was God giving them a word, them obeying that word, stepping out in that word that they saw victory. That's right. And that's really what we're talking about. It's about victory. It's not about just, oh, that's just right. hanging back. It's a, it's a matter of charging and in let's there. define victory again. Victory is not the walls coming down. It's part of it. Right. Victory is stepping in to the, the assignment. What has God told you to take and occupy for the kingdom. That is the win. Yes. These things the enemy throws at us are all about discouraging us, about lying to us, about telling us we have no future, holding us hostage, but the walls are down. Just like the Red Sea parted, mm -hmm. the walls are down. So what are you waiting for? Get into the promise. Just jump right. in there, learn your authority, learn how it operates, learn who you are. That's the thing. Learn who you are in Christ, take territory, the promise, the good life is on the other side of the pressure. And it's going to be great. It's going to be worth it taking territory. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.